Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here. Welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Up to date it's a Hornbeat steam locomotive that I've never reviewed before and there are very few of those left so I really must make the most of this one. <laughs> I believe Hornby have released versions of this model in the past, a few years ago, but it's one that I've always missed out on. It's always flown under my radar, which is a shame because it's one that I've always wanted to try. So when Hornby announced that they were producing more of these a couple of years ago, and it is quite a long time ago now, I did place a pre-order for one. But like everything else uh, recently, there have been huge delays with this model. In fact, I think the delays go back before the pandemic. All sorts of has gone wrong with this model. I don't even know what, but it has taken a very, very long time to get here. However, it has now arrived with me and it is this. It is the Hornby Merchant Navy class in BR Blue and this is in the original condition. Of course, I have reviewed Hornby's Merchant Navy in the rebuilt condition and I've, I've reviewed the Light Pacifics, the Battle of Britain, the West Country class, but never have I reviewed Hornby's original Merchant Navy locomotive. So this should be absolutely fascinating. Now, I thought this model was quite a, a lot of years old. I was thinking, you know, 10, 15 years old. According to the back of the box, the drawing on the back, as we will see later on, was dated 2015, which suggests the model will have been released for the first time around five years ago. I don't remember anything about the original release. I didn't realize it was as recent as that. So that makes this much, much newer than Hornby's Light Pacifics, the uh, sort of West Country or what have you. So I really do not know what to expect. It was quite expensive. I believe the RRP for this is £179.99 on Hornby.com, which is quite a lot of money. It's not as bad as some of their sort of newly announced Pacifics and such, but it's still quite a lot of money. Because I've had this pre-ordered for quite a long time, I got this quite cheap. I got this from Hatton's for £148. I think most retailers are selling this for more like £160+, which suggests that the price has gone up even since these have been announced. Don't quite understand why that is. So the expectations for this are going to be quite high, but you know what? Hornby's bullied locomotives, including the Q1 and such, have always been absolutely wonderful. So I do have high hopes that this one will be as well, but there's only one way to find out. So for the first time, let's get this out together, see what this is like. Okay, the Merchant Navy class in BR Blue. And I believe there are quite a few different liveries that are available or that are to be available for this loco. I've seen BR Greens, which look very, very smart. And also a Southern Black. I'm sure I've seen a Southern Black. Whether that's still coming or not, I'm not sure. But that one looked absolutely fantastic. I did go for the BR Blue, though, because it's one of my favourite liveries. And I just really wanted to own a Merchant Navy in BR Blue. Now, I say BR Blue, it really doesn't look like the same shade of BR Blue that I've seen in the past. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe it's a bit more of a greeny, turquoisey blue, maybe. If so, does that mean that this will be the first loco I've ever had in this livery, sort of? It's still BR Blue. Is it just the box inaccurately showing the livery again? We've had quite a bit of that over the last few models from Hornby. I really don't know. I've not had this out of the box yet. I guess today we will be finding that out. Let me show you the version I have then. So this is product number R3632. It is the early BR livery. It has the early crest on the tender. Merchant Navy original. I'm guessing that means unrebuilt. And it is the East Asiatic Company, number 35024. And this is DCC ready. I assume it will have an eight pin socket inside. Right, let's take a look at the back of the box. So you can see in real life, these were classified as an eight P. So it was quite a high number there, quite powerful locomotives, the merchant navies, of course. In the middle, you've got a little bit of history, a brief history of the class. As always, feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to. And there's the diagram that I mentioned a little earlier on, dated 2015. And the models tend to get released for the first time a year or two after that. So I would guess 2016, maybe early 2017 uh, for the first release of these, which is really, really messing with me. I really did think these were a lot earlier than that. Probably I'm just getting mixed up with the West Country class, which was sort of 2001 sort of time. Yeah, much, much, much more modern than I expected. So I don't know, maybe the price will be worth it. We shall see. Anyway, really fascinating class. Let's find out what this is like. Much larger, by the way, than the Light Pacifics. Even though these were built first, you might expect that the, the larger locomotives came later on. Nope, it was actually the smaller ones that came later. 
later on from Bullied, which again is an interesting little factoid, isn't it? Right, come on, let's stop waffling. Let's take a look at this. Does the livery actually look like it does on the box? First question, let's answer it. Here we go. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, the answer is no, actually. <laughs> Yet again, look at that. I'd say it's closer than it was on the T9 or whatever. But this, well, I'm still not convinced it's exactly like the BR Blue that I've got on the A4 and the Scotsman. It's a lot less greeny turquoisey than it is on the front of the box. But you know what? That still looks absolutely marvellous, doesn't it? I can't wait to take a closer look at this. There we go. What locomotives, by the way. I know I have called Bullied Pacifics ugly and such in the past, and I do think that's true, but don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the design. I think the air smooth casing is one of the coolest things ever to come out of uh, the railways over here in the UK. Yeah, I do really, really love it. Come on then, let's see what this is like. I'll be really, really interested to see how this compares with the Battle of Britons and the West Countries in terms of the build quality and the features and the detailing. Yeah, is it going to be very similar? Is it not? Yeah, I really don't know. I, that's why I've always wanted to try one of these. Okay, let's take a look at the paperwork. Merchant Navy class, here it is. I wonder if the chassis is going to be very different. Is it going to be a bit larger, presumably? Okay, this is not showing an awful lot then. So there's a bit about lubrication, standard lubrication points. Where to fit the accessories? We'll take a look at the accessories bag in just a second. Body removal seems to be largely standard, doesn't it? Couple of screws at the front there, front bogey as well, and also a screw at the rear. Assembly, connecting loco to tender, that's fair enough. Close coupling, that's good. DCC slash sound, you can see it does have the eight pin socket. Anything else on the back? Okay, that's just the brake rods, which do appear to be fitted to the model already. I think I just spotted those, is that right? Yeah, looks like they're fitted already, very good. Okay, shall we do this then? Let's do it. Let's have a look. I can see there's quite a lot of uh, sort of accessories in the accessories bag, much of them painted. So let's take a look. So what do we have in here? Right, so quite obviously the painted parts are the cylinder drain cocks, which look quite nice, made of plastic, of course, but nicely painted. And also the vacuum pipes as well that have got a bit of red paint on them. There is a coupling, presumably for the front, and a few other bits and bobs, including some pipe work for the buffer beams. So that's all fair enough. Yep, that should all be absolutely fine. Oh, let's satisfy. I mean, this has been a good week, hasn't it? First the GT3 and now the Merchant Navy class. Come on then, let's satisfy. Well, I, I don't know if anybody else besides me has got curiosity to satisfy, but I certainly do. Right. God, you know what? This is noticeably quite a lot larger than the, uh, the lighter Pacifics. Right. Let's see if it's any heavier then. Oh, yeah. I think it, you know what? I think it actually might be. Bear with me try and get this nicely into shot for you and we will take a close look at this together all right wow yeah i don't know i think i just think the br blue really suits this locomotive i would love one in southern black but i definitely don't regret going for this version because it's awesome isn't it looks really really nicely done actually tons of lining i bet that nameplate or whatever you want to call it is etched because there's a really nice sheen to that I don't know, I love these locomotives, even down to the wheels. Look at the strange design of wheels. Always love that about the bullied locomotives. All right, so yeah, this looks really, really cool. It does feel pretty heavy, but I'll get it onto the scales for you so that I can tell you exactly what this weighs. And then of course, we will take a really close look at some of the various details. In the meantime though, here comes a little bit of history on the class itself. The Merchant Navy class was a fleet of 30 Pacifics designed, of course, by Oliver Bullied and built during the 1940s. They would be the first of Bullied's Pacifics and they went by a number of different nicknames, including packets and spam cans. So if you hear those names, they refer to these as well. The latter, of course, being due to their air smooth casing, uh, which was actually designed to make the locomotives easier to wash and maintain rather than because of any sort of aerodynamic advantage that it might bring. Another design feature that helped to give these their iconic appearance was their welded construction as opposed to traditional riveting, which came about as a result of austerity in the Second World War. The class was also quite unconventional on the inside as well, running on chain-driven valve gear, which is fundamentally different to traditional steam locomotives. Now, these strange design choices didn't stand the test of time, unfortunately, and British Railways modified and rebuilt the class in later years to resemble a more traditional steam locomotive, with no air-smooth casing and traditional wool shirts valve gear. 
So of 30 produced, 11 still exist today, although one is only partial, so you could call it 10 if you wanted to. Although none survive in this original unrebuilt condition, all that's left of those really are photographs, films, memories, and of course these lovely models. So there it is then, the Hornby Merchant Navy class, up close and personal for you. And you know what? I think this is absolutely incredible. I am really, really happy with this one, particularly for what I paid. I think really my only criticism with this would be the overall finish of the locomotive. Uh, it's the same old problem, really, that we see quite a lot with Hornby. I guess I'll talk about that first, get it out of the way, and then we can talk about what a wonderful model this is otherwise. I think it's just really bad luck that Hornby have released this at the exact same time that KR models have released their GT3 gas turbine because the body construction on these two prototypes is quite similar. And looking at this locomotive right after I looked at the GT3 highlights how much better the finish was on the GT3. So as you can see, it's just got a real nice satin finish, almost shiny, not quite glossy, but real quality looking. The Merchant Navy here has a much more matte finish. It looks quite plasticky. I'm just not keen on that. I'm not getting the quality vibe from it. Now, I get it. Yes, a few years ago, Hornby did experiment with the glossy finished locomotives, as you can see here, and it didn't work out too well. I know people said they looked toy-like and that Hornby shouldn't do it again. And maybe they were right, but since then, other manufacturers like KR Models, but also like Dapol, like Backman, they've experimented with more sort of satin finishes, which actually look amazing in my opinion. They're not so glossy that they look toy-like, but they just have a real quality finish. And that is, I think, something that Hornbeat needs to work on with some of their later releases, because these plasticky finishes are just not befitting of locos that cost what these do. And it's not just the finish of the bodywork, it's some of the other metal parts as well. I mean, the pipework underneath the firebox area and the cab, it's all right, but it is just painted plastic and it just doesn't have that realistic metal effect that you get when you look at a real steam locomotive. Maybe a change of paint would be enough to fix that. Maybe they would have to make those out of metal to fix it, but either way, they don't look 100% great. Same thing goes with the components such as the safety valves. I don't know, you just look at those and they look like plastic, don't they? Even the older West Country class has the proper metal safety valves, and I do think they look better for it. Having said that though, the model overall is superb in my opinion. I really am happy with this, like I say. So let's take a look up close then. Let's take a look at the decoration to start with, which is done incredibly nicely. So you've got the traditional BR blue lining, which goes across the whole length of the body. And as you can see, the accuracy there is 100% spot on. No complaints at all with that. You've got the joins between the blue colour and the black colour around the cab area. Again, it looks absolutely spot on to me, no complaints at all. The running number, again, similarly high quality printing on the side of the cab. As I've already mentioned, the nameplates are clearly separately fitted and they actually do have a nice glossy finish to them, uh, which suggests that they are etched and then possibly painted over with a sort of glossy paint or something. I don't know, they just look high quality though, don't they? Really, really like that. I think that's a great little touch. Let's take a look at some of the other detailing then. I mean, the bodywork itself is very, very nicely detailed. The molded detail, as you can see, is all very nice and crisp, very nice and sharp. Up on top, you can see we do have an opening cab intake for the crew, so you can open and shut that. That's a really cool little extra, isn't it? You've got what looks like a separately fitted whistle next to the safety valves there. Again, that does appear to be plastic and it shows, but it is at least nicely molded. Look at the chimney. It's gonna be hard to get a shot of this, but even looking down the funnel of the chimney, you can see there is detail down at the bottom. That's a huge step up from Hornby's West Country class, in my opinion. Look nicely detailed buffer beams. The buffer housings are quite big, chunky things, even detail on those. And yes, the buffers are made of metal and they are sprung as well, which is marvelous. Nice little touch of detail there. Above there, we have the separately fitted lamp irons. Looks like the center one has seen a bit of damage in transit because the top of the iron there is missing, unfortunately. I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be because it looks like a bit has been broken off. So that is a pity, but I wouldn't say there's a quality problem or anything because that's the only issue I've seen. And there is the smoke box door. It's got the running number printed onto it, as you can tell. And of course, the separately fitted smoke box darts as well. You've got these smoke deflectors, which I think must be a separately fitted piece, but they're very, very carefully applied. As you can see, no visible glue underneath where they are fitted at all. It's a really, really good fit, that piece. The whole cab area is beautifully detailed as well. You can see we've got metal handrails around there. 
There's also some decent glazing fitted to the cab. It's all nice and flush. And the windows here are modeled in the open position and you have what looks like a, a wooden window frame painted around that as well. So the attention to detail is clearly there. And the cab detail itself is phenomenal. It's a huge step up from the West Country or Battle of Britain from Hornby. You can see that all of the different components have been picked out. Some of them are separately fitted. The gauges are fully painted. It's a really, really beautiful cab. And I think that makes a huge, huge difference. It really does look fantastic. I've already talked about the bullied design of wheels. I mean, if you want to know more about this, look it up because it is a very fascinating design story, I suppose. The front bogey ones are worth looking at. So there's a close up there. As you can see, the driving wheels are not really the same design, same sort of style, but a different design altogether. Really like the design of those. Very nicely realized on the model. And while we're there, the connecting rod and the coupling rods are very nicely formed as well. Very finely produced. They look nice and realistic, which is great. The rear pony looks very realistic, but unlike the West Country and Battle of Britons, it is actually fixed and therefore the axle is blind there. I know a lot of people don't like that, but producing it this way means that the bogey can look more realistic because if they designed it to move as the real thing would, there would have to be proper clearance between it and the rest of the chassis and therefore you would lose some of the realism. So yes, it is very unrealistic that the thing doesn't move, but I've heard Hornby say in the past that this is the lesser of two evils and overall it produces the most realistic result, which I think is fair enough. I don't really have a huge ax to grind on that, but if you do, obviously bear in mind that is a feature with this locomotive. Let's take a look at the tender then, which actually is completely different from the rebuilt Merchant Navy tenders I've had from Hornby. I did wonder whether they'd use the same thing. Doesn't look like it. These look a lot more detailed. The decoration though is 100% spot on, as was the case on the locomotive. You've got the same high quality lining, which matches nicely with the lining on the locomotive. You've got the early British Railways crest, again, very, very nicely applied. Shame about the finish, again, on the tender. I think if this had a finish more similar to the GT3, I'd like this a lot more, but it's not a huge deal. It's just something that I do notice. The underframe, you can see we've got the separately fitted pipework and lots of molded detail around the axles. And you can, of course, see that all of the brake rigging and such is already separately fitted to the model under there. We are running a little bit low on coal, as you can see. It is only a small coal load. It is removable, actually. So if you wanted to do away with that altogether, you could do. But of course, there's nothing stopping you adding lots more of your own sort of crushed coal into there to make it more realistic if you wanted to. Look, you've got the separately fitted cab doors, which are posed into a nice realistic position. You've got the glazing even on the cab windows. Bit of a tender four plate there. It doesn't move or anything. It's just sort of sticking out rigidly. Tons of detail across the top of the tender. You can see all of the usual details, including the water filler cap and other parts around the back, separately fitted ladders and such. All of the lamps are pre-fitted as well. And you've got these sort of molded wires that connect those together. I don't think we've got any working lights on this model, unfortunately. That is quite standard, but I guess if we've got the lamps permanently fitted like this, it would have been nice to have had lights behind them. Maybe that's a way for these models to modernize going forward. But again, it's fairly standard that models like this don't have lights. And then at the back, you've got more of those sprung buffers, separately fitted metal ones. You've got the NEM tension lock fitted into the rear NEM pocket. And of course, in the detail bag, there was an optional coupling that you could fit to the front if you wanted to. Ah, it just it ticks all of the boxes, doesn't it? It looks fantastic, except the finish. But the detailing is marvellous. The decoration is fantastic. The quality of the assembly is very, very high as well. Can't really see any glue marks at all. The vast majority of the details, except for that front lamp iron, I guess, are fitted to the model perfectly straight, nothing wonky. Yeah, I'm convinced. I think I'm won over by this. For what I paid, this looks like an absolutely beautiful model. So with that, I will investigate the mechanism. I will film myself doing it. We'll get the loco down onto the track and give it its first ever test. This should be a lot of fun. Let's do it. So there she is, the absolutely beautiful Merchant Navy class from Hornby down onto the track, ready for the first test. And I'm really pleased to say that the mechanism is very much up to Hornby's usual industry leading standard. The chassis is much, much better than the older rebuilt Merchant Navy chassis Hornby used to use. I wondered whether it would be based on the same thing. It's not, it's completely different. It's much, much better. First of all then, the weight is really quite good. 436 grams, that's heavier than a Hornby A4. And it's only 10 grams lighter than the A2 slash two, which was very, very heavy indeed. So that weight 
is great, should lead to some great pulling power, I'm hoping. We have a lot, a lot of pickups on this locomotive. All of the tender wheels pick up and the driving wheels pick up as well. So you've got six pickups going to each line, which means that the reliability, the connection should be absolutely uninterruptible, should never become a problem. If I remove the base keeper plate, you can see that it comes away without any wires attached. That's fantastic for servicing. I really do like that feature. You can also see that every driving axle is fitted with a proper set of turned metal bearings. That's really good quality, always a feature of Hornby Locos, really like that. And you can see that it is just the rear axle that is driven, so there's no over complication going on there. You can also see how easy it is to replace the rear pony truck. And so it's a pity that Hornby haven't included a flanged axle to put into the pony because they must know that a lot of people are irritated with the blind axle. And to give people the option, even though they won't be able to use it on sort of third radius curves or whatever, to give people the option would have been really, really nice. That's something that Hornby used to do but haven't done very much recently. So I would like to see them start to do that again if possible. The chassis is really big and chunky, a uh, very, very heavy chassis. Obviously, it weighs 436 grams uh, loco and tender. So there's a lot of die cast on that. Here is the motor. That is the sort of typical five pole motor that Hornby use in a lot of their larger locomotives and Pacifics. That is good. Less standard is this flywheel. I think this wins the award for the most ridiculously huge flywheel I've ever seen on a model. Absolutely massive, that one, to the point where I hope the motor is a good one because it's going to have its work cut out for it, having to spin that great big thing. And also that is coupled to a drive shaft, which in turn couples to the drive train. And therefore, again, just like the GT3 was, the actual wheel set and everything is completely isolated from the motor to reduce vibrations and such. So that's fantastic. The gauging was absolutely fine. I think the first back-to-back -back I measured was 14.5, which is 0.1 millimeter too tight. All the other axles were 14.4 though, so the gauging is not going to be a problem at all. Overall, the mechanism is really, really impressive. It's top notch. I can't really think of any way for it to be improved other than the inclusion of the sort of flanged axle at the back, but I would personally never use that. So for me, this is the perfect mechanism. That's all on paper though. This loco needs to be tested now. It's not been run in. This will be its first ever run, but straight out of the box does the loco work. Let's just turn it up a little bit abruptly to start with. All right, yes, it does. <laughs> and I thought when it started to move that it wasn't going to be dreadfully smooth. I am not thinking that now, though. Look at that, look how constant that is. I've been, I mean, the last few Hornby Pacifics I've looked at, I suppose besides the A2 slash 2, they've been very... I don't know, they've been very inconsistent in their speed, slowing down at certain parts of the rotation. Oh, thank goodness this one's not doing that. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous performer. Let's run past at 50% speed. My God, I've just seen that flywheel kick in. All right, so that's 50% speed. It's a really, really competent speed. Now I'm going to cut it off. Cut off now. My God, look at that. <laughs> See what that flywheel does. So it glides to a stop. That's beautiful. It means that you're never going to get any unrealistically sudden stops. Look at that. I can't make it. I can't make the wheels lock up. Just cutting it off, look. Wow. What a mechanism. Hornby's mechanisms are usually good, don't get me wrong, but this one is stunning. Right. Can it crawl? That's the next question. Surely it will. Yep. It will. And that, folks, is quite impressive given the size of that flywheel. Look at that. It's inching a little bit, but God, that motor is having to turn that flywheel at slow speed. Don't forget there's no reduction in the gear ratio between that flywheel and the motor. Oh. Seemed to struggle there for a second. But it's not yet been run in. I mean, this is incredible to say that it things not been run in. I'm hoping we won't see things like that uh, once it's been run in. But even if we do, overall, that performance is epic. That is absolutely brilliant. Look at that. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose there isn't a great deal of torque at the very slowest speed. Yeah, that is struggling in reverse. That's funny. We've had quite a few struggling in reverse recently. It was all right forwards, though, wasn't it? Yeah, so at that speed, it does seem to be binding at certain parts of the rotation. There we are. 
Okay, 50% speed then, let's run it in, see how it handles all the different curves and things. All right, well, it's shooting up Gordon's Hill without any problem at all. Seems to be faster already, and it's only done about half a lap. I wouldn't go as far as to say that the gearing is incompetent or anything. Yeah, the speed isn't too fast, but it's certainly speeding up now that it's running in, which suggests at least that the warming up is actually having an effect. So, as you can see, there is no visible slowing down on any of the curves. Totally fine on Gordon's Hill, no derailing or anything. So, it looks like this is going to get a real thumbs up. I will leave this to run for 25 to 30 minutes in each direction. And then I'll come back to you very shortly and we'll do some more tests. This is looking good. One of the best performers in quite a long time, this. Very excited. Okay, see you in a minute. All right, folks, sudden stop. Oh, God, look at that. It's loosened up even further. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating. This is a seriously good runner. I can count the Locos in my collection that run better than this on my fingers. Seriously, it is that good. So perfectly smooth, no noticeable slowing down at 50% speed. We'll see whether that changes at a lower speed at say 40 with some coaches later on. No derailments, obviously, no cutting out, obviously, over the express points because it's just got so many pickups. Ah, oh, it's just beautifully smooth. Really, really lovely runner. Is the crawl any different to what it was before? Let's try it. And get to the left of the shot. Forwards. I think the forwards crawl was pretty darn good to start with, but try again. Ooh, bit of a jump there. Start again. Right, easing this time. Yeah, look at that. I think it is moving. It is inching forwards at that speed. That is insane. I mean... It, that's at the point where it's not realistic, isn't it? You'd never be getting quite that slow, surely. A bit faster. Look at that. Look how smooth it is. No binding up. It's marvellous. How's it in reverse? I didn't think it was quite as smooth in reverse. All the facts. It's pretty smooth already, though, isn't it? Look at that. Right, come on. Let's do the crawl in reverse. Ready? It's on the express points, actually, so this is pretty evil. Let's try it, though. It does jump when you initially change direction, I've noticed. That's strange. Must be just taking the slack up in the mechanism. All right. Oh, can we do it? Yeah, it's a little bit inconsistent in reverse, but still at this sort of speed, it becomes beautifully smooth. So overall, yeah, it's a marvellous, marvellous performer. I just can't. Hang on. Let's do that flywheel stop again. I can't get enough of it. Ready? Let's do a bit faster this time. Ready? Oh, that's crazy. It's like a DCC stop, literally. Wow, amazing. Right, so the pulling power was pretty good. I measured 0.44 newtons, which is all right. Yeah, it's fairly powerful. It's not as powerful as some, but it is more than the A4 that I looked at. So that's something, isn't it? Should translate into roughly 27 coaches. So to test that out, I've hooked up some Lima <laughs> chocolate and cream coaches. Not very nice coaches, but they are quite numerous. There's seven of them. So that ought to be a good test of the pulling abilities of this lovely loco. So without any further further ado, let's go and get it coupled up. I can't wait to see how this looks with the train. This is going to be awesome. Look at that, how smooth it is. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it, I must say it's a bit more controllable than the GT3 was. Look at this. I, can, I bet I can get it super accurate. Look at that. There we are. Push back a bit then. Let's get back into shot, back into focus. Oh, it's just an epic looking loco, isn't it? What a crazy looking design. What must they have thought when this was wheeled out of the shed for the first time? Or I suppose the first Merchant Navy was wheeled out for the first time. I wonder if people liked them. You know, having built up knowledge on what steam locomotives should look like up until that point. That's strange. Right, up to 40 speed. There we go. All right then. On the middle line then, this is a loco that I cannot do a Merchant Navy review without running, <laughs> but it is quite a sensible choice. So this is the rebuilt Merchant Navy, and of course it's a very sensible choice because it's in the BR Blue. See? Any excuse. So yeah, this is a much older locomotive. I still love it, don't get me wrong, but this has been left far behind in terms of detail and mechanism uh, by the Merchant Navy. It's, I'm just annoyed that I didn't get one sooner because the unrebuilt uh, models from Hornby are amazing, absolutely amazing. There we go, with some Pullmans, of course. And then on the inside line, I have the other bullied Pacific. Uh, this is the West Country slash Battle of Britain. I suppose this one will be, can't remember now, it's Tangmere, let's put it that way. 
And this is the slightly newer in real life, not in model form, a slightly newer design, slightly smaller design, uh, not too noticeably smaller. It's about half a cab's length. So yeah, it's noticeable if you stand them next to each other, I suppose. But uh, yeah, it's another one of my favorites. Again, nowhere near as good as the new Merchant Navy, a bit more sort of outdated. Mechanically and everything, you know, still decent, but the Merchant Navy uh, takes the prize, I'm afraid. Right, let's go and see how it's getting on, shall we? Right. I mean, I respect everybody's opinion and everything, but you will not be able to convince me that this is not one of the greatest locomotives ever. Maybe we've seen locos with better detail, but I haven't seen very many that run better than this, and I haven't owned very many that I can honestly say I like more than this. And just look at the performance. It's acting like it hasn't got coaches coupled to it at all. It's a seriously heavy duty mechanism. The motors are obviously such quality because the size of that flywheel is unreal. The fact that the motor can just turn it without batting an eyelid is incredible. What a wonderful locomotive. If the finish was a little bit better, I would say this would get damn near 10 out of 10 because it is that good. Very, very pleased with this indeed. Let's have some ratings then for Hornby's Merchant Navy class in original condition. And I've got to say, I'm thoroughly impressed with this one. Take my hat off to Hornby over it. It's much more modern than I expected it to be, much more detailed. The mechanism is way better than I expected it to be, and the performance matches. So yeah, it is a good score. Level of detail, I've given four star. I have thought about this long and hard because there are some lovely details. I love the separately fitted lamps and such. The cab detail was wonderful. The decoration was really, really good. But again, you've got that slightly plasticky finish, which I think does spoil the sort of detail a little bit. And of course, some of those plastic parts, such as the pipes and the safety valves, very few parts like that, but the ones that are there do spoil the illusion very slightly. So I've knocked off a star for that. Overall though, the level of detail, fantastic. Performance, I do feel justified in giving this five star. Maybe you might think it's a little bit generous because in reverse, the crawl wasn't absolutely perfect, but as far as I'm concerned, it is near enough. Wow, what a performance. I mean, that flywheel makes this ultra, ultra smooth. Great speed, not too fast. It looks great at a medium speed. The crawl is fantastic. It handles curves and gradients without any issues whatsoever. Yeah, the performance is absolutely top notch. Pulling power is okay, 0.44 newtons. We have seen more powerful locomotives than this. However, this one isn't particularly weak and it's not particularly powerful either. It's just sort of average. It's more than the A4 could handle, but a little bit less than the A2 slash two. So I think that's quite reasonable. The mechanism has to be five star, amazing mechanism. Loads and loads of pickups, three per rail for the Loco and another three for the Tender. That's fantastic. Proper bearings on the wheel set, single driven axle, five pole motor, flywheel. Ah, oh, it's just really, really good. I love the mechanism, one of the best ever. The quality, I've given 4.5. Very, very few issues in the quality with this. I did notice that slightly damaged lamp bracket. I wouldn't have knocked off much for that, but I do think it loses half a star just for that plasticky finish. Besides that though, yeah, the, the actual build quality of this is very, very good indeed. A lot of plastic on the bodywork, but there's a lot of metal on the chassis, so the weight isn't an issue. It really is just the finish that is let down on quality. Value for money then, £179.99 it is the RRP, and that makes sense because this loco is a little bit simpler than your A2-2s and your, what I don't know, whatever's coming out next, the hush hush or whatever, because of the air smooth casing. That sort of covers up a lot of the complexities of some locos. So yes, I can understand why this would be a little bit cheaper. Having said that though, when you consider the caliber of the decoration, of the detail, of the mechanism, the fact that this is 20 or 30 pounds cheaper than Hornby's latest releases is quite good. And also the fact that this is available much cheaper at the retailers is great as well. I think about 161 pounds I saw at D-Rails, paid even less for mine, but that's because I pre-ordered it a long time ago. Yeah, it's not a bargain, but it's decent value for money. You get what you pay for. So I've given it four stars, yes. Overall then, that's a great score, unusually high. I'm quite harsh these days, but this is a good score, 8.55 out of 10. Let's put that into the logbook. There it is, second place, just above the W4 Peckett and below the Backman 1P. Yeah, I think that's thoroughly deserved. It's a really, really good model. I'm pleasantly surprised, and it's a very, very welcome addition to my collection. Look at that huge locomotive like this and it does not care about those second radius curves with one of the biggest trains I tend to review with as well. 
It's impressive stuff. All right, do you know what? Do you know what? I think I'm ready to announce it. I think this is my new favourite locomotive. Yep, I've said it. I always used to say the Bullet Pacifics were my favourite models, but then as I started to see more detailed ones coming along, those with better mechanisms, I found it harder and harder to say that while keeping a straight face. But this Bullet Pacific has a lot more modern features. It's got the detail and it's got the mechanism that does Bullet's designs justice. And therefore, I think I can firmly reinstate this class and this model as one of my absolute favourites, if not the absolute favourite. Yeah, I'm going to say it. It is my favourite model at the moment. And uh, I hope you don't think I'm insane for that. Hopefully, you can see why that is the case. Yeah, it's really, really epic. I love it. So, if you fancy one, don't think twice. Uh, act now while they're in stock. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Do, of course, let me know down in the comments what you think. Have you got one of these? Have you got one from the previous release? If so, how does it compare? Do you think I'm right to give this such a high score? Do you think I'm justified to call this one of my favourites? Obviously, I think I am. But if you disagree, make your case down in the comments. For now, though, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Thanks for your company. And I will see you very soon. In fact, I'll see you tomorrow for another live stream and later on for some more videos. So thanks for watching, folks. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, everybody.